Chapter One, Jeans. When I was at Lou Joseph Children's Home on Stroud Avenue in Willenhall in the West Midlands, there was this couple that worked there who we called Uncle Chris and Auntie Steph. They were definitely the more laid back kind of people, the trendy staff in the place. They're the ones that took us to Derbyshire camping in the minibus. I'd been to Barmouth before with the school and I'd like to think Londono in Wales, um, I think we went to Aberystwyth or somewhere. But this was a great trip. It was only going to be going to Derbyshire, but it was going to be amazing because on the way there, Chris introduced me to the Beatles on his eight track in the van. A Hard Day's Night Revolver and all these albums. But Sgt Pepper was the one that really stood out for me. It changed my life, it really did that record. Even when I think about it now, it's still a very much a big part of me. When I get older, losing my hair, when I'm 64. <laughs> well, I'm only like, how far am I off that? I'm like 10 years off that, so I'm all right. <laughs> and I've lost my hair. Um, it seemed like a million miles away back then. And of course, it's right here now in my kind of return movement, if you like. The golden return movement. The memories that I have from that trip are so beautiful to me. I just felt so good driving through all these places in the country and the smell of the wet fields, even cow pats and camping in a tent with all these kids having their sleeping bags and the morning dew, how cold it was on their face and how warm your body was in that little pod. And as soon as you felt that cold air on your face when you woke up, you felt like you were a part of something else the fresh country air. It was just amazing, an amazing thing. Beans for breakfast and bacon that was cooked outside on a stove. It felt so primal. It felt like I was a caveman of some sort on this adventure, finally living the Huckleberry Finn life. Almost, I don't know. It was just a beautiful time. But what I find even more beautiful is the way the music that I heard on the trip stayed with me on the journey the journey that came after, because of how it's tied to the memory of certain places at certain times. Very Freudian. It always reminds me that you can go back and forth in these moments of madness in your life and kind of lock yourself into music. One particular track on Sgt Pepper, the last song, A Day in the Life, was just so unbelievable to me as a young man. I suppose the bit where the orchestra goes mental was one of those moments where the love of my love of strings came into life. You know, Lucy in the Sky of Diamonds was just so out there in the other world. But did I really, you know, know that it was based on hallucinogenics for a start? <laughs> I suppose I've heard different stories and things that were told to me, and Chris was a bit of a hippie anyway. He'd always wear these ripped jeans, Levi's, that had loads of holes and patches all over them. I always wanted a pair of them. Weirdly enough, that's something that always stuck with me. Even now when I go into Diesel, Renzo Rosso's place, an Italian guy that started that company, and he still owns it outright. He's a lovely man and a really great friend of mine. I met Renzo in Miami, and as much as I don't see him, I might not meet him for a year or so, but when I see him, it's like old times. I met him and stayed in his hotel between 8th and 9th, the Pelican. And uh, it's kind of that place where me and Bjork had a crazy breakup. We were going to get engaged, and we were going to get this house, and we were going to get married, and blah, blah, blah. But then some of this personal stuff starts happening, and it just didn't work out. It wasn't the right time. Life throws these curveballs at you sometimes. It's kind of devastating for a bit, but to be honest, I'm here in the best place I could possibly be. Anyway, the whole thing with Renzo, and the funny thing with Renzo, is that there's diesel jeans... I'd always have these holes in my jeans and have patches all over them, just purely because of the memory of Chris and his jeans and how cool I thought they looked. And of course, looking back 30, 40 or 50 years even after the event, you know that these jeans were the only scrap jeans that you throw away or keep alive by patching them up. But apparently, you can walk into a shop and buy them for 500 quid. Wow. I think the thing to elaborate on and the idea of listening to a day in the life 
and the way the strings crescendoed into this acceleration and arriving at this amazing da-da. I always remember that reverb echoing around my head. But just how prolific that song is, even to this day, when you think about when they made that record, and that song in particular, it really helped me to understand that it's just a story, and it's telling a story really well, which I hope I'm gonna do for you guys. Mm -hmm. 